Well, here we go with lesson 15. Uh, we're going to break lesson 15 into two parts, parts A and B. And this covers section 7.2, so we're leaving chapter 6 and we're skipping over chapter section 7.1, which is some really nasty identities. You're going to be happy we skipped that. And now we're doing trigonometric equations. And so our, the question here is find all solutions of the equation. Well, there's an infinite number of angles whose cosine is 1 over square root of 2. And so in order for us to come up with an algebraic representation of all the solutions, we're first going to identify the angles between 0 and 2 pi, and then we're going to add periods, intervals, onto that. And I'll show you what we're doing here. So first of all, part A here is find the values between 0 and 2 pi that make this a true statement. And so you should have been thinking 45 degrees because the cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. And cosine is positive and quadrant is 1 and 4. So those are the two angles between 0 and 2 pi, pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, that have a cosine of 1 over square root of 2. Well, part B then says, now we're going to actually answer this question in part B, find all solutions. And so I want all the angles that are coterminal, both positive and negative, with pi over 4. And I want all the angles that are coterminal, both positive and negative, with 7 pi over 4. So I add 2 pi on to pi over 4 and I add 2 pi on to 7 pi over 4. But I can also subtract it, and I can, and I can add multiples of it, you know, 2, 3, 4 times the multiple. So we let n represent an arbitrary integer, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And by adding multiples of 2 pi onto pi over 4, this is an algebraic representation that produces an infinite number of coterminal angles with pi over 4, all of which have a cosine of 1 over square root of 2. By adding and subtracting 2 pi multiples onto 7 pi over 4, we have an algebraic representation, that's a big term, of all the angles that are coterminal with 7 pi over 4, all of which have a cosine of 1 over square root of 2. This right here, this part B, all of it, represents all the angles that have a cosine of 1 over square root of 2. And there's an infinite number of them. And since n is an arbitrary integer, this produces an infinite number of them. How about this one? Sine t is negative one half. So right away you should think we should be thinking pi over six, and you should be thinking quadrants three and four. And the pi over six angle in quadrant three is seven pi over six, and the pi over six angle in quadrant four is eleven pi over six. So here are the two angles between zero and two pi, and that's what we're going to base our answer on for part b. Now the period for pi, for sine is two pi. So this adds two pi multiples. On, or n subtracts, by the way, because n can be positive or negative. We add and subtract 2 pi multiples onto 7 pi over 6. We add and subtract 2 pi multiples onto 11 pi over 6. And 2 pi happens to be the period of the sine curve. Just as in the previous problem, 2 pi was the period in the cosine curve. So this represents all possible angles whose sine is negative 1 half. Now let's try a tangent problem. So here tangent theta is equal to 1 over square root of 3. Well, you should have been thinking quadrants one and three, because that's those are the uh, that's those are the two quadrants in which tangent is positive. You should have been thinking pi over six, so pi over six in quadrant one and seven pi over six in quadrant three. Now, here's something different though: the tangent curve has a period of pi. Every pi radians it repeats itself, and these two angles are actually separated by exactly pi radians. That didn't happen in the previous two examples. And so, what's different about tangent? is that you only need one part to your answer. And we have one answer for every question. However, we only need one part here because pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6 are already pi radians apart from each other. And pi is the, uh, rain, or is the period for tangent curve. So pi over 6 plus pi n, that's all we need. That, is, that will produce an infinite number of angles that are either coterminal with pi over 6 or coterminal co with 7 pi over 6 and therefore have a tangent of 1 over square root of 3. We don't want to write pi over 6 plus 2 pi n comma 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n because that wouldn't be concise enough and we, we like to be concise in math. Well let's do a cotangent problem. Well the first thing you want to do is get it out of cotangent. So take the, take the reciprocal of both sides. So when you get the reciprocals right away turn them into sine cosine and tangent and then forget about cotangent or cosecant or secant. This is simply tangent theta is equal to negative square root of 3. This is the question I'd rather answer than this one. Oh, tangents negative and quadrants. 
2 and 4, and then you should have been thinking pi over 3 and quadrant 2, 2 pi over 3, and you should have been thinking pi over 3 and quadrant 4, 5 pi over 3. But again, the tangent curve has a period of pi, so I'm just going to use one of these, well, 2 pi over 3, and so my answer is 2 pi over 3 plus pi n. Now at this point I should tell you that any angle that is coterminal with 2 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3 can start the parade. We normally pick the first one, but you could have written 5 pi over 3 plus pi n, and that would have been a perfectly fine answer, as long as you only had one part to your answer. Because remember, n can be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So we can always get back to 2 pi over 3. I will tell you that we will normally pick the first one that we come to between 0 and 2 pi to start the parade. Cosecant is 2. Well, you know what? That means sine is a half. And you should be thinking quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, and you should be thinking 30 degrees. So those are the two angles between 0 and 2 pi that make it a true statement. So I'll use pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 to start my parades, and 2 pi n and 2 pi n, because 2 pi is the period of the sine curve. 2 pi is the period of the sine curve. There you go. This produces an infinite number of angles beta that have a sine of a half, therefore the cosecant 2. Secant of, I don't even know what that Greek letter is, so why did I use it? Oh well, secant is equal to negative square root of 2. That means cosine is equal to negative 1 over square root of 2. You should be thinking 45 degree angles in quadrants 2 and 3. 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And cosine has a period of 2 pi. And so I add 2 pi multiples onto both of them. This is a description of all possible angles whose cosine is negative 1 over square root of 2, therefore their secant is negative square root of 2. And that's how we do it. Now, again, there's multiple answers here, though, because negative 5 pi over 4 and negative 3 pi over 4 are coterminal with both of these angles. So you could legitimately answer this. There's actually an infinite number of infinite answers, if that makes any sense to you. Any angle that is coterminal with 3 pi over 4, as is negative 5 pi over 4, or, or, or co-terminal with 5 pi over 4, as in negative 3 pi over 4, can start the parade. Now, I think we're reaching a little bit when we do this. However, these are both, this is a legitimate set of answers right here. This is normally the one you're going to see and normally the one most students will come up with. But there's an infinite number of infinite answers. I don't know what infinite squared is, but I, I think it's pretty big. All right, cosecant u is negative 1. Now, these are a little unique because now we're getting on the quadratiles. And so uh, that happens at pi, and that's the only time it happens. And then you've got to go all the way around the circle to see it again, because remember, cosine has a period of 2 pi. So pi plus 2 pi n represents all possible angles whose cosine is negative 1. And when you're on the quadratiles, you know, 90, 0, 180, 270, funny things happen. Normally with sine and cosine, you have two parts to your answer, but here we only had one part because this only happened once between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, sine x equals 2 pi over 3, and this is a trick question. People think that this is a the 60 degree angle in quadrant number 2, but no it's not. It's just 2 pi over 3. I don't know, what is 2 pi over 3? It's like 2.09 something. So what angle has a sine of 2.09? Nothing. There is no angle whose sine is 2.09. Had this 2 pi over 3 been over here in the x, I know what the sine of 2 pi over 3 is. It's square root of 3 over 2. It didn't say that. Find the angle whose sine is 2.09. There is no angle whose sine is bigger than 1. So therefore, there's no solution. I, I think this was a trick question, but I still like it. All right. Describe all angles whose tangent is undefined. All right. Now think about it. Where's tangent undefined? At pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, right? Top and bottom of the, of the, of the unit circle there. Well, again, these are offset by exactly pi radians, and the period of tangent is pi. So I only need one of them, pi over 2 plus pi n. And that's the answer you would normally write, but you could certainly say 3 pi over 2 plus pi n. As long as you only give me one part to your answer, I don't care whether you start with pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 or any positive or negative coterminal angle with either one of them. Because remember, n can be positive or negative anything, as long as it's an integer. Hey, we finished part A. That wasn't too bad, was it? You can either get going on the homework or you can watch part B. That's up to you.